Hello, good morning students. How are you doing today? Well, welcome. I'm really excited to get to see all of you today. Uh, my name is Erin, and I'm joining you today from the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California. And we are actually going to get a chance today to learn all about animals that live in shells. And I'm here today with my friend Allie, who's behind the camera. She's controlling everything you see behind me, and she's going to be here um, to help put up some really cool animals with shells on it. Now, before we get started, I want to talk all about how you can interact with us today. So if you are watching this live, it's Monday morning, 9 a.m. Pacific time. You can text us right here at 562-286-1838. Again, that number is 562-286-1838. And that's the best way to ask us any questions that you have or share your observations or the things that you notice about the animals that we're exploring today. If you're watching this at another time, email us at live at lbaop.org and we'll do our best to get back to you within the next couple of days. So if you have any other questions, you can definitely reach out to us there. Now we're gonna take a look at some shells that I have on my document camera and we're gonna see what we notice about these shells. So get ready to put your scientist hats on. We're gonna make some observations. So I want you to look at all these shells. We have, let's count them, we have one, two, three, four, five. What are the things that you notice about these shells? Hmm, I notice they're all different shapes. Look at how they're all just a little bit different. None of them are the same shape. I also notice they have different colors and patterns. You notice how this one kind of has some stripes on it? And this one has some spots on it. And look, this one has these kind of lines, these like indented lines going out. And this one has some holes. You can see there's one, two, three holes. And then we have this white one down here that's kind of pokey, isn't it? So I noticed that shells can be lots of different shapes. They can be different colors. What do you think? Can they be different sizes? Do you notice different sizes? They can, look at all those different sizes also. Now I have a question for you. Why do animals have shells? Why is the shell helpful for them? If you have a guess, get an adult to text us in right here, 562-286-1838. Why do you think that shells help animals? How do they help them? Hmm. Do you think animals might live in those shells? Maybe the shells help to protect them. You can imagine if you were an animal with a soft, squishy body, that having this protective shell could be a way to make sure that you stay safe. Now, another thing that all of these animals have in common is that these animals are invertebrates. So I want you to reach around, feel your spine. Do you feel that spine or that backbone going up your back? Yeah, that's your spine or your backbone. Your backbone helps you to sit up nice and straight. It helps you to move around. But the animals that live in these shells, they do not have bones. They are what's called an invertebrate. So they instead, um, they have other adaptations that help them survive. Other things about their bodies that help them survive. And one of those things are these shells. So those shells help them to survive. And the animals will live inside these shells. Now you might be wondering, where do shells come from? Have you ever seen a shell before? Have you maybe found one on a beach or in the ocean or somewhere else? Raise your hand if you've gotten a chance to see a shell before. Now those shells, we might find them on the beach and they might be empty when they're on the beach, but when they're in the ocean, these animals live inside them and they're actually made by snails and snails relatives. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a closer look at some of these shells and we're going to learn about the animals that live inside of them. So they are um, animals that make those shells. So just like you grow your hair and you grow your fingernails, um, your body just is able to grow those parts, the animals that live in shells, their bodies are able to grow those shells. So they're actually made by animals, which is really, really cool. 
Now, I mentioned that they're made by snails and their relatives. We're going to take a look at this shell first. This is a shell. It's called a cowrie. And we're going to, let's flip it over, see what it looks like. So that's actually the opening where the animal would live. So this shell has a very small opening. I wonder if we can see a picture of what this animal might look like. Or a similar, we have, a, I think, a similar type of cowrie. Very cool. So this is a cowrie. It's just a different type. That's why its pattern is a little bit different. Um, but this is one is called a chestnut cowrie, and these live here in California. So if you live in California, these animals also live in California. And I can tell that there is a snail living here inside this cowrie. And the way that I can tell is because if you look at this bumpy part with the spots down here, that's actually a part of the snail's body. This is really, really cool. So this snail, you notice how this shell is really, really smooth. And the reason that it's smooth is because the snail has this body part that it's basically able to send up over the shell and then it polishes the shell. So it makes it really, really clean and really, really soft and really um, smooth. And then it brings that part of its body back underneath its shell. And that's how it's able to be nice and smooth. Now you might be wondering, why would a snail want to be smooth? Wouldn't it want to be bumpy? Can you think of a reason that it might be helpful for a snail to be polished and smooth like this? Hmm. Imagine if a predator was coming and a predator was trying to grab the snail. It would be really helpful if the snail's shell was really smooth so that the predator couldn't hold on to it. So it helps to make sure that they are um, smooth enough that a predator can't hold on to it. You can actually also see a part of the snail's body right here. So this is a chestnut cowrie living in one of our tide pools. Let's take a look at another one of our um, snails. Let's look at this one here. This is an abalone shell. This is another type of snail, but you'll notice it's much, much bigger than the cowrie that we were just looking at. It's much, much bigger. It also has these holes along the side of its body. It uses those holes to kind of exchange water with their habitat, so that's how they get water in and out. And I'll show you the biggest difference between this, sh this snail and the cowrie we just looked at. Ready, let's flip it over. Wow, what do you notice? We'll see if we can get the light to shine, but do you see how it's really shiny and beautiful inside of there? Yeah, it has this really shiny, this is the part that the snail would live in. So you see how this opening is a little bit different than the opening that we saw earlier. So just like this, just like the cowrie, and just like the snails that you see maybe in your garden, this um, abalone has a really sticky foot, and it uses that sticky foot to hold on to things. Now let's go ahead and see what an abalone looks like when it's still living inside of its shell. Very cool. Let's look really, really carefully. See if you can spot these abalone. Can you find them? Look, let's count them together. Ready? There's one abalone. Here's two abalone. Here's three, four, looks like five. Did I miss any? Oh, there's one down here. Do you see this one? There's six. I think there's six abalone, but abalone are really, really great at hiding or camouflage. You can see their shells match their habitat really, really well. So sometimes they're a little bit hard to find because they're camouflaging. And that helps them to make sure that they don't get um, eaten by predators, by things like sea otters that love to eat them. Now, the other adaptation that they have, oh, wow, look at these abalone. The other adaptation that they have is that sticky foot that we were talking about. Do you see this black material here? You can see it on this one also here. That's that foot. So just like other snails, they have this really, really sticky foot, and that sticky foot holds on. And they can use that sticky foot to move along the seafloor, just to kind of crawl along the seafloor. But they also use it to hold on. And abalone are so, so great at holding on that they're able to stay in one place really, really well. Now, abalone are also found here in Southern California. So if you're found in Southern California, this is one of the spots where they have been able to be found. Um, they do need our protection, though. They are an animal that does need our protection um, because they have been taken out of the ocean too, too fast. So we need to make sure that we are protecting these abalone. But as you can see, look at that sticky foot. 
What else do you notice about them? You can see their shell. Is their shell smooth like the cowrie that we saw or is it rough? Hmm. If you're thinking it's rough, you are correct. It's kind of rough and it's bumpy. Now, I mentioned that abalone need our help. Here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, we are helping abalone by raising them at the aquarium. So what we do is we raise them as babies, and then once they get to a certain size, we take them out into the ocean and we drop them off in the ocean. We find the perfect home for them where they're going to be able to live really, really happily, um, and they're going to be able to find lots of other abalone and lots of food. So we find that perfect spot for them. And we build this little box that they live inside of, and we drop that box down to the seafloor, and there's lots of food inside that box for them. Here's a baby abalone, so you can see what they look like as babies, um, and they are even smaller than this when they're first um, when they're first hatched. They're even tinier; you can't even see them in the water. They're so so tiny, and they float in the water. And then when they get bigger, they get this shell, and as that shell develops and grows, they get too heavy to float in the water. And then they sink to the bottom and they eat lots of algae like kelp and seaweed that lives in the ocean. So when, we, when they get big enough to go out into the ocean, we put them in that box with a lot of seaweed for them and a lot of kelp. And then we take that box out into the ocean and we leave it in the ocean and the abalone can eat the kelp. And then when they're ready, they can leave the box and, uh, and go live out in the rest of the ocean out in our kelp forests. So that's how the aquarium is helping our abalone um, by giving them a safe place to grow up until they're big enough to be out on their own in the ocean. Here you can see more of them. Look at that sticky foot. That's what they'll use to crawl around. Now they have the ability to crawl, but they really, really like to find a home. So oftentimes once they find their home, they'll just kind of stay there. They find the perfect spot for them and then they'll just kind of spend a lot of their time there. And there are those holes that we noticed. Look, it looks like this abalone might be eating some of that kelp. They've got these mouths underneath their body, and that's how they eat their kelp. They use this, um, this little, like, scratching tool, and they'll just scratch that kelp with their, um, with their mouth part. So they're really, really cool. They're one of our favorite animals here at the aquarium. Now let's go back to our shells, see what other snails we can find. Now we have one last snail I want to look at. Now you notice how this snail shell is spiraled. So the other ones have been kind of round, but this snail shell, watch, how, look how it's kind of spiraled. Do you see that? It kind of moves and it's also bumpy. You can see it's bumpy too. Now let's see where the animal would live. Look at that nice big opening where the animal would live. Now, we don't have this type of snail here in, um, in Southern California, but we have a really similar one called a Kellett's Whelk. And we're going to take a look at a Kellett's Whelk and see how they are similar to the other snails that we've looked at today. Because we know that snails grow shells and then they live in these shells. Oh, this is a cool photo. So look, here's that spiral shell. Do you see that spiraled shell? all the way spiraling to a point. And then here is that snail. So you can see that the snail has that sticky foot that it uses to crawl along the seafloor. And, and then this is kind of like its head parts. So they've got this, um, their ability to kind of move along the seafloor. And then they also have their ability to go inside their shell. Now the Kellett's Whelk has this really cool thing. It's almost like a front door. So if it goes all the way into its shell, it can close off this like front door. It's like a hard part and that can help to protect it from predators or um, if it's out of the water during low tide. And that is a protective um, part that the Kellett's Whelk has. Now I want to talk about this spiral shape. Now you notice how this shell is spiraled shape. We're going to go back and look at my other shells really quickly. You'll notice how this shell is kind of a spiraled shape. This one is kind of hard to see, but the abalone, you can see it kind of starts here and then it is a little bit spiraled. It's a, it's a little bit harder to see those spirals. But then this shell here, if you were to look inside of it, you would also see that it spirals inside of it. Now let's go back to that Kellett's Welk picture so we can try to figure out why these shells might have spirals. 
Now, the reason for it is because when the, when the snail is very, very, very tiny, it lives just in this part of the shell. And then as it grows, it builds new shell. So it goes from having this little teeny tiny shell to growing a new shell. And the shell gets bigger and it gets bigger and it gets bigger. And the shell grows in that spiral shape. So that's how it's able to grow in that spiral shape. So it adds on a little bit more of the shell as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It just adds on more and more. And that's why it's able to kind of spin like that in that spiral shape. Now, we've talked about the fact that snails make shells, but there are also some relatives of snails that make shells as well. Let's take a look at one of those relatives of a snail. Now, this is a clam shell. And if you've ever seen a clam before, then you would know that usually there are two clam shells that go next to each other. I actually think I have another one that is pretty similar size. So we can just pretend the way that the clam shell would go is it would look like this kind of. And then inside that clam shell would be the clam. So the animal lives inside of there. Now, other similar animals are things like scallops and mussels and other animals that live in two shells. Now I have a, um, a puppet here to kind of show us what that looks like. So let me just grab my little puppet friend. So we can see what a scallop, or excuse me, what a clam, this is a giant clam, looks like. All right, so here it is. You can see that it is closed, right? The shell is closed. And then inside of it is the animal. So we have this part here. That's where the actual animal is. Now you can see this clam has a pearl because clams do um, sometimes grow pearls inside of them. Um, uh, but this, this one is closed up. Now this is really cool because giant clams, they sit on the seafloor like this. So you'll see them sitting on the seafloor and then they have this kind of tissue on the top and that tissue has a very special algae that lives inside of it. It's called zooxanthellae. You might have heard of that algae before if you've ever heard of coral. It's the exact same animal that lives inside of corals. And so that algae uses the sunlight to make food for the clam. So they're able to get their food from the sunlight in the same way that um, that coral does. So the clam isn't using the sunlight, but the algae, the plant that lives inside of the clam, uses that sunlight. Now, inside of there is that animal. Now, clams are really, really strong, so they keep their shells shut really, really tight so that predators can't get to that soft animal inside the shell. Um, but just like snails, they grow their own shell, and that's because they are related to snails. So they grow their shell, and as they get bigger, their shell gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, some clams can get to be really, really big. They can get to be over 500 pounds. So they can be huge and they'll find a spot that they like to sit and they'll just sit in that one spot. They'll stay in that one spot. Um, they don't really move around. Now there are other types of, um, of animals with two shells that do move around, but for the most part, they're gonna just find one spot and sit. So if you're here in Southern California, you might have seen mussels before. Um, mussels are a very similar animal. They have two shells and on the inside, they have an animal that lives inside those two shells. And that animal um, will hold on really, really tight to um, boats or to docks or to rocks or whatever they hold on to. And they'll grow with lots and lots of mussels all living around right next to each other um, on those surfaces. So this is an animal that is related to snails that has two shells. And like snails, they build their own shells. Looks like we have a question here. Oh, wow. Um, the question is, what is the biggest ever snail shell? Very cool. The biggest ever snail shell is the trumpet um, or the giant whelk. And it can reach 18 kilograms. So that's about 35 pounds or so, um, 35, 40 pounds. And that's the biggest snail shell. But like I just said, the clam shell, the giant clam can get to be 500 pounds. So that's much, much bigger than that giant, um, than that largest snail. All right, let's take a look at one more relative of a snail 
and we're gonna get it back up here on our document camera there we go and that's this one here this is a chambered nautilus and this is really really cool this is my favorite one of my favorite um, ocean invertebrates and it is actually more closely related to octopus so it has a lot of similarities to an octopus and you'll notice it has these stripes that we talked about those stripes actually help it to camouflage a little bit so if you'll notice it has um, it's kind of dark on the top and then lighter on the bottom and the reason for that is because it helps them to blend in in the ocean now I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over. Now what we've done is we took a Nautilus shell and we just sliced it in half really, really carefully so that you can see the middle of it. But usually it would just, um, you wouldn't be able to see this. This is kind of the inside of the shell. But what you'll see is there's all these different chambers inside of this shell. So remember how we talked about that whelk, how the whelk grew and it started at the tiny, tiny point of the spiral. And then as it grew, it added on and it added on to that shell. The same thing happens with this Nautilus. So when the Nautilus was really, really tiny, it lived right here. And then as the Nautilus got bigger, the shell got bigger too. So it added on on these chambers as it was growing. Now the Nautilus only lives in the very, very last chamber. So at one point when the shell was this big, the Nautilus was living right here. And then it moved into this chamber and then it built more shell and moved in here and it added on more and more and more and more. So at this point, you can see that this is where that those chambers kind of end. So this is the part of that shell that the Nautilus was living in. Now, the reason it has all these chambers is because the Nautilus can actually add air to those chambers. So it's kind of like how if you had... Um, like if you were a scuba diver, you add air and that helps you go up or you take away air and that helps you go down. So that's how the Nautilus is able to swim in the water. Now you might be wondering, what does this animal look like? Because I've never seen a swimming snail before. And this is exactly what it looks like. So you can kind of see how it has all these little arms and tentacles sticking out. That's because it's related to octopus and squid and cuttlefish and animals with arms and tentacles. Now those animals are also related to snails, but this is the only one that has the shell. So octopuses don't build shells, but their relative, the Nautilus, does. And I have another puppet here to show you what that uh, Nautilus looks like. So here you can see all of these little tentacles coming out that helps them to grab onto their food. And then you can also see they have eyes. So there are their eyes. And then you can see those stripes that we were learning about when we were looking at those shells. So they've got their, that ability to kind of swim in the water and they'll move up if they add air and they'll move down if they take away that air. So that helps them to move around. And they live in the middle of the open ocean. So they don't live on rocks like other snails do. Um, they don't live on on docks or piers like the mussels that we talked about they just live in the middle of the open ocean and so every single day they move up to the surface at, during the day to feed on things like plankton and very small fish and then they move down at nighttime and then during the day they move up and then at nighttime they move down and that's that nautilus how cool is that and we'll get that number back up here. I know that some of these animals you've probably never heard of before. So we're going to get our phone number back up here so you can text us in if you have any questions at all. Now, I know a lot of you are probably thinking, what about crabs? We haven't talked about crabs at all. Now, you've probably heard of hermit crabs. I have a hermit crab here I'm going to grab for us. Now, hermit crabs do indeed live in shells. You are correct. Hermit crabs live in shells. But... They don't make the shell. We already learned who makes the shells in the ocean. What animal makes shells? If you're saying snail, you are correct. So what happens is a snail will make the shell and they'll live inside that shell like we talked about and the shell will grow with them. As the snail grows, the shell gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then when the snail is no longer alive and it's no longer um, it's no, no longer living in the shell, then a hermit crab will find an empty shell and will move into that empty shell. So this shell was made by a snail and the hermit crab is just using it. And then when the hermit crab gets bigger, they're not able to 
grow the shell because crabs don't grow shells, only snails grow shells. So when they get bigger, they'll leave this shell and they'll find a bigger shell to move into. Here you can see this is a hermit crab that's living inside of a shell that was made by a snail. Now they do, crabs and their relatives lobsters, they do have the ability to molt. So they do have an exoskeleton. I'm actually, we're gonna look at my, her I have a horseshoe crab here. Whoops, I have a horseshoe crab here that we're gonna look at. And this is um, just a molt. So there's not a living animal inside of there. This is just a molt. So what happens is a, um, an animal like a crab or a horseshoe crab or a lobster, when they get bigger, then they have this outer skeleton. It's not quite a shell. It's made of a of different material than a shell. But they have this outer skeleton, and that outer skeleton gets too tight. Just like when you grow and your clothes get too tight and you have to get new clothes. So what they'll do is they'll leave their, their exoskeleton. That's what this is, that molt. They'll leave that exoskeleton, and then their body will harden a new exoskeleton. So imagine like if you had a sweatshirt and as you were getting bigger and bigger your sweatshirt was getting too tight so you just took off that sweatshirt but then your body just hardened a new sweatshirt. Your body was able to just make a new sweatshirt on your outside. That's kind of what it would be like. So this is a horseshoe crab and this is just the molt. Perfect. All right. So I do want to talk about one last animal that lives in shells because there are some animals that live in shells that are not snails. And the one I want to talk about is a sea turtle. Oh, are you wondering? Yeah, I knew that sea turtles lived in shells. Let's see if we can take a look at a sea turtle. And I actually have a sea turtle shell here. Now, just like snails, sea turtles build their own shells. So they build the shell and the shell grows with them as they get bigger. So a sea turtle cannot leave their shell. They will live in the same shell for their entire life. And they have on the outside, instead of having spirals, they have what are called scoots. So you can kind of see these little things. They look kind of like scales. You can kind of see them here. Here's a big one right there you can see pretty well. Um, those are their scoots and they use those scoots, um, those scoots kind of make up their shell and they use their shell as protection. So here we can see this sea turtle and look it's able, you can see all those scoots on its body and that big shell helps to protect it. Now you might have seen turtles on land before and you've seen how they can pull all the way into their shell. They can like tuck their head in and pull all their arms in. Sea turtles cannot do that. So their arms and their legs will always be outside of the shell. They can't pull them into their shell because the shell's just not big enough on the outside, um, but their shell does stay with them for their entire life. So it grows with them as they grow. And then the, the sea turtles will swim through the ocean and then they'll eventually go up on on land um, where they'll lay their eggs and then their babies will hatch on land and when they hatch out of the eggs they have a tiny tiny shell and then that shell will grow bigger and bigger and bigger I wonder if we might have any pictures of baby sea turtles we're gonna see if we have any pictures of baby sea turtles because everyone loves seeing baby sea turtles and then we can see what those tiny shells look like. Now, different types of sea turtles have different types of shells. So some of them have scoots like we just talked about, those kind of um, like, they almost look like scales. They're kind of like circles or hexagons. Um, but some of them, some sea turtles instead have, um, they kind of look like stripes. They've got like stripes that go down their back. And I think that might be what we have if we do have any baby sea turtle um, pictures. Oh, perfect. It sounds like we have a video. All right, let's look out for those shells. Oh, there we go. So look at, there's a baby sea turtle. And look, it has a shell. And that same shell is going to be with that sea turtle for its whole life. So it's going to go out to the ocean. And it's going to live for many, many years. And while it's in the ocean, its shell is going to grow. And it's going to get bigger. And its shell is going to get bigger. And it's going to just keep on growing. There it is. Look at how cute it is. And just like a snail, the sea turtles use their shells to protect themselves. So they're a form of protection for them.
Now, students, I have had so much fun learning with all of you today. If you think of any other questions that you missed later, feel free to email us at live at lbaop.org. Um, for all of our teachers out there that are watching, if you could just text us in really quickly at this number and just let us know how many students you have watching. Um, we try to have an idea of how many people we're reaching, so getting those student numbers is really important to us. So just text us in, let us know how many students, and um, and we are looking forward to seeing you soon. We're gonna going to be back on Wednesday um, with an English episode and a Spanish episode. So if you'd like to join in for Aquarium Online Academy, come back on Wednesday. Um, we'll do English at 9 a.m. and Spanish at 10 a.m. Thank you, and we are looking forward to seeing you soon. Have a great day.